good stuff. Let's get started with the topics. Yeah, you must. Okay. Okay, last class, uh, we tried to understood, uh, understand kind of concepts like regarding testing, right? So what we understood last class is something about if some people have joined. So testing is a methodology to, uh, you know, find out defect. At the same time, it is uh, it's a kind of a, uh, you know, process to match the client requirement or the requirement it's being given. Let's suppose you are planning or building a house, right? So what happens if you are not building as per the requirement? The requirement is given, you should use this particular material. You should construct the 4BHK house and then you are, uh, you know, you're building or you're, you as a builder or a developer, right? You end up with you know, creating a lot of uh, disturbances, a lot of mess. So the problem is if you're not doing any testing at the very initial stage, it, the, in the middle of the process and the end, end, end of the process. So what happens, your structure, your particular building might be, you know, might not be built as per the client requirement. So testing says, we testing is generally finding out a defect. Okay, so we as a tester, okay. So testing can be done by a particular team of people. So who does testing in the team? So a tester generally, a test engineer, or whatever it is, tester, test engineer, right? Test analysts. So in real time uh, companies, uh, the name are like this, test analyst or something. It goes to test lead, manager, so a lot, lot of things. So whoever, whoever uh, does kind of testing is generally meaning to find out the defect. And once you found out a defect, so to get it fixed also. Once you get it fixed, so what happens? So there is no defect. If you find out there is no defect, so what, what it results, right? Quality is good. Quality is good. And hence, if quality is good, what happens? The client satisfaction or customer satisfied, right? <clears throat> so it is resulted with different set of uh, implementation. If you're not doing testing, you'll not be able to find out a defect. So what is the defect here? Already we have understood from the last class, defect is nothing but a difference, right? Difference between actual and expected value or expected result. Anybody who is not understood what is the defect, We'll elaborate here. So let's suppose uh, we are taking in a calculator an example, right? Calculator, what we are planning? What is what is your expected result? Let's suppose you are expecting something and your actual result will be something else. Then, then there will be a difference will come. So that difference, once you find if you find a defect, it, had, it has to be fixed, okay? Or it has to be resolved, whatever you say. Once it is to be resolved, then only you'll find no defect and the quality will be good and the customer satisfaction will come into picture, right? Guys understood? 
So testing is doesn't mean that only you are finding out a defect, right? It's not only meaning finding out a defect. It also says you are trying to match or you're trying to uh, build the software as per the client requirement. Right? So whenever we say we are taking in a calculator example, what is our expected result? Let's let's suppose five plus five. What we are expecting is ten. So if you open up a calculator. It's not only addition or subtraction, right? Five plus five equals to 10. So the same actual result, this is the real time result is nothing but your actual result. In a calculator, what do you got? 10. So as there is no difference, so there is no defect. If there is no defect, definitely the quality looks good. If quality is good, then definitely we will take the calculator and definitely satisfaction will come. Whatever you take an example of uh, multiplying the things, seven into three, general 21, if you click okay, so definitely we have. So this is a particular application we took, which is not having any defect, but in real time in industries, we are working on different set of applications where we might be having a lot of defects and those defect has to be fixed. And if there, that has to be fixed, then only then there will be no defect. There is no defect meaning. There is no difference between actual and expected output or actual and expected result. If there is no difference between actual and expected result, so the quality will be good and customer satisfaction will be good, right? If you don't, if you don't do testing, you, you are skipping the defect, you're not fixing the defect. If you're not fixing the defect, lot of you know errors, lot of uh, defects will result in lot of uh, you know uh, things like you know, you might not get a customer satisfaction and the quality will be not good as, as you expect, right? So that is what whoever does a testing as a test engineer, as a presser, as a test analyst, lead or manager, senior tester, whoever does, make sure the application is built as per the client requirement. That is what testing is meaning. The testing generally, whenever we cook a particular curry or rice or any chicken, veg, non-veg, we try to test in between, right? Sometimes we uh, get all ingredients and we prepared the particular uh, curry or anything. After we think that the particular preparation is fine, we added salt also, we try to test. And we found out, yes, that that is good. The quality is good. So we'll get ahead and we'll close the particular thing. So like the same way already, we have been testing the things at home, right? But here, what we'll be doing, we'll be testing different set of applications. And once we test the applications, we, are ma we make sure that whether it is a curry, we make sure the curry is prepared good so that we can serve to a lot of people at least we can also eat, okay? So whatever you do, we make sure the quality is good. If quality is good, satisfaction will definitely come. So if you don't do testing, so the satisfaction and the quality will not be good. So that is what you make sure the things are in proper. So before you create uh, or you test a particular application, you have to build the application, right? So what you have to do is you have to start the building the building the things. So the building the things comes only when we have a SDLC process. So SDLC today will understand what what it is meaning. It is called as software development 
life cycle. So software development life cycle is nothing but the, uh, the area where a particular plan, a requirement comes. With that requirement, we are trying to develop a particular application or product or software, and it has some cycle. So whatever software application we are trying to build or we are trying to develop in a particular cycle, it is called as software development life cycle. So software development life cycle gives us idea of building a or developing a software with a different stages. So what are the stages we have? The first page or the first stage is requirement collection and analysis. If you, if you don't have a requirement, then definitely will not be ending up the building or developing a software. So the problem is what you have to do. The phase one says we have to gather the requirement and we have to start analyzing it. What kind of requirement it comes up? So in general, an example we take on we're building Amazon website, right? Let's suppose Amazon is not or something, any any application state, trip card, Amazon, anything. So what happens when you say we are trying to build a Flipkart application? It might be your web application. Web is generally on Chrome or Edge or any particular browser. Or it might be your mobile application or any other application it is, right? So when you planned when you plan to create application, web application, so that is your requirement. You have a requirement to create your mobile application. So that becomes your requirement. So you, you try to find out your requirement. Once you find out your requirement, what happens? You're trying to analyze the things, right? The first page, you, you have a plan to plan to develop develop Flipkart application in the form of web or mobile. So that is what your requirement. So the software development lifecycle has different phases or different stages. So it is the first phase is requirement analysis. The second stage is feasibility study. So how much feasible it is? whether what we are planning, whether we will be able to develop it. So feasibility, feasibility generally comes into picture. Okay. Feasibility is generally uh, a say like whether whatever you're planning, whether we will be able to do that or not. So what kind of resources we have? What kind of uh, platform we have? Hmm? What kind of resources, what kind of platform, what kind of uh, you know, stage of the server ideas? So if, if you don't have a feasibility, then you'll not be able to build that. So the study, we have to definitely do a study before we plan, develop, design, code, and a lot of things. So the next stage comes here as a design. So if you are planning to develop a particular design, so it might be a, a low level design. Okay. Or it might be high level design. So whatever it happens, so it might be your LLD, low level design, or it might be your high level design. So what it says, what is low level? Generally, if a particular application is confined to a restricted user, like 1000 or 2000, or somewhere around 5000. So that level of design will be low. 
but whenever it is going for like flip card we don't know it might be we have 1000 1 lakh or 1 crore 10 crore customer so it becomes a high level design so the design we also plan we have to build that correct so that comes only when we have a planning we have a design method let's suppose we are planning for high level design if you go for high level design so we have to have lot of resources lot of planning lot of uh, things lot of feasibility lot of requirement analysis you have to do before you plan a high level design so the next is next stage is phase four generally says coding coding says it is like a development okay coding is nothing but a development so it is nothing but in general we say software development life cycle generally matters a lot when we talk about coding coding it might be a developer okay who is coding the developer is something has a lot of capabilities on creating a lot of uh, you know projects uh, it might be having uh, idea of implementing a lot of things at the same time he or she might have idea on different languages like you know python java csa a lot of things so development comes into picture so once you develop that then the phase of testing comes or it is this phase is very important for us to understand what kind of testing we're doing. Today also we'll see what are the different, if time permits, we'll be seeing what are the different type of testing we have, okay? So when we say that uh, testing, so testing, as we said, testing is a phase where we try to find a defect. At the same time, also we try to find whether the application is being developed as per the requirement. Whatever we had a requirement, whether it is planning or it is getting built as per the requirement. If it is not uh, being developed as per the requirement, so what we do, we plan something, it has to be developed with the requirement. If any set of defect is there, we will tell developer ahead, developer, fix the defect and give us a good quality product. And then we'll again retest the product or the software or application. And then we try to deploy into the next phase. Somewhat, uh, we might have seen uh, once your house or your curry is ready, so you are just uh, given or you are serving to a lot of people is serving to a lot of people. So installation and deployment is generally meaning like that. Once your application is ready and there is no defect, if say there is no defect, okay, if there is no defect, then this particular phase comes. So this phase says it is, uh, you know, application is ready for deployment application is ready for deployment to which server it might be a different we'll di discuss a lot of things but it is it might be a server where a customer will, is using a customer or a particular co consumer is using so that is called as the deployment phase once the deployment happens we try to come and see if any sort of uh, uh, defect or any sort of errors we're getting so we have to have maintenance always so to maintain you know if you deploy or given a particular curry or food or any to any people any sort of people they're saying there is some salt is missing or any sort of oh, something is missing so what you do you do a maintenance you add some salt and try to you know boil the uh, thing or you try to once it is ready, once you maintained it, again, you redeploy the same thing. Again, the deployment happens. Again, you serve the pool. 
and you try to see whether whether the customer satisfied or not. So that is what the all the pages are generally the meaning whenever we have a requirement, whenever we end up with a deployment or maintenance. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I will give you the omission. Okay. So what happens? So all the processes starts from the requirement. Hence, you can see here, this particular image gives us idea on understanding the requirement, getting into the study, what kind of uh, process we are trying to build, whether we are trying to build a high level or low level design. If you say, it's a high level design. So a lot of resources, a lot of developers or testers required to test and develop the product. So once your coding or development is ready, you're giving a chance to check whether your application is built or there is no defect. The application which we planned is uh, developed as per your requirement. And then if there is no sort of defect, we said, if there is no defect, then only we'll get a good quality product. And if you have a good quality product, then client or customer is satisfied. In general, you might have seen some people might have order a particular phone or a particular device, and that has some amount of defect. That particular product, is not working as expected, right? Sometimes it happens. If it is not working as expected, meaning there is some amount of defect or errors. So that has to be fixed. So what do you do? You generally, when you purchase a product from a particular website, you try to uh, check if it is not working fine, you refund it, right? But it's not happened here you have to build that particular process. If some issues are there, the developer is there to fix it, to resolve the defect. So once developer found there is no defect, it is ready for installation or deployment and some few modification to be done. So few modification can be done using maintenance. Okay. So this is what the general overall idea on the software development life cycle. We are developing a particular software, we're developing a software in different phases. In life cycle is nothing but a phase, starting from building with the requirement till the maintenance is called a cycle. So it goes on like this. Okay, so any doubt so far guys? Anybody, anything? Anyone? All okay? Sir, please give recording permission, sir. Yeah, already given. Recording is there. So once we close the recording, right, we'll be sharing you the recordings. Is that fine? Okay. Oh. Yeah, so nothing to worry on that. So if you understood the concept of software development life cycle. So software development life cycle comes with testing, right? If you don't test, already you know what will happen. If you don't test a particular curry or a food or a biryani, anything you are doing at home also has to be tested. If you're not testing at the very uh, phases, so then you'll end up with uh, end up with a particular uh, you know a particular application or any particular build or any biryani will not be having a good quality. The quality will be good only when, yes, perfect. Only when we have different stages. So the stages are already we understood. So we'll go to the next understanding of different software life cycle. We'll understand in next few classes that what are the different life cycle methods we have. So when you say SDLC models, so we have waterfall. We have different models 
but the very popular model is agile current industry market is on agile completely agile why agile we'll see and we'll understand agile says whenever we say uh, we have to build a particular application in different frequent intervals okay so agile gives us a flexibility to develop the application to test the application to deploy the application in frequent intervals with a lot of customer interaction lot of customer feedback okay with a lot of uh, uh, you know objective that will be building the software in very very uh, small 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 crunch and will be integrating together and will be building a very particular model will not be having so much of defect so the main idea of doing all of things having different uh, kind of models waterfall rad spiral b incremental iterative big bang so a lot of model doesn't make any sense once if you have a particular goal and the agile will be you know going for our classes will be going through agile and b and waterfall only three models waterfall b and agile so rest models are generally not required but just to show you that these models are there in the market before 10 10 years 8 years 5 years back still waterfall exists waterfall is a very traditional methodology so when we say waterfall is traditional so what what it comes with it comes with all these things whatever we say whether it is waterfall or agile or v or arrayed or spiral so it should have all the phases all seven phases from collecting the requirement to design develop test and deploy so but the agile is a different way of uh, uh, testing from all of this is we have a very let's suppose you are building a house so what you do first you uh, build your base right you're building your base then you're building your pillars once pillars are ready you are building roof if you have roof everything is ready you are trying to build some or you are some connecting some doors windows okay and then somewhat whatever in process comes so and a house is ready okay a house is ready so this is what different phases it has different phases of building a particular house a house can't be built alone right directly we will come uh, build a house somewhere and we'll just uh, place it somewhere else it's not like that we have to build we have to plan plan a particular base we have to build the pillars a lot of materials lot of in ingredients we build the roof so all of things happens at very stages very particular time let's suppose you're building a particular base for one month if it's a very big apartment or something and then pillars the roofs so it takes some time so there is it has to have a particular thing once you have not built a base you can't build the pillars right so like the same way we'll be understanding the agile methodology in a very time period agile we have this one month there is some time so time is divided into different sprints we'll understand what is sprint sprint is a particular time bound of two to four weeks there we start building the software we start test it we deploy it and we maintain it so this is what in particular we say the sprints and sprint cycle starts sprint uh, planning meeting it will have a daily scrum meeting so it will have a, a sprint review and we will understand that in different models uh, in agile uh, methodologies so what we understood here is whenever we have a software development life cycle the testing comes into picture 
and testing without testing you will not be end up with a good quality product so inside or understanding software development life cycle we have software testing life cycle also so we will be going into software testing life cycle it says it is a sequence of different activities planned performed to understand the goal to get the requirement to build the software as per the client requirement or as per the requirement and we make sure there is no defect and here is your software testing life cycle pages in software testing life cycle we say we are building or we are testing a particular requirement whatever we had the requirement we are understanding the requirement and then we are planning on testing what what kind of testing will do okay what kind of testing will do also we'll see today what what are the different testing methodologies what kind of testing in software testing is divided into different set of testing that also we'll see but if we say software testing life cycle it generally starts with requirement gathering analysis planning and once you plan and we we have a thing called test case design test case design or development test case is a set of document where we will generally understand what is a test case is test case will give us idea on what is what is we are expecting and what what is our actual output and what is the result if test what what happened test result so soft uh, the test case design gives us idea on everything whatever we have given as input what is our input we had an input of 5 plus 5 we were expecting 10 we have we got 10 and what is the result test result either it is pass or fail so test result pass only when we have our particular expected actual result are matching what is expected is 10 what we got is 10 so result got pass the test is pass yes 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 so the test result pass only when we have actual and expected result are matching somewhat sometimes what happens it fails fails meaning test result failed meaning your expected and actual result is not matching so if it is not matching so if it is failed so what happens so definitely it's, there is some defect so we'll understand so everything whether it is test result expected actual or input to validate the particular functionality is written in a particular set of document it is called test case so test case design or test case here it is the test case development gives gives us idea what is what is our input what is the expected result what is our actual result and what is the test result so all these things are documented so in document what about the things are so that comes in a test case design or test case document page we'll understand in testing creating test plan understanding requirement test plan test case design execution everything matters and it's very it play it plays a very important role while doing all activities if you don't understand the requirement properly you will end up with different other planning of test you will do a different set of design of your test cases and you will end up with doing a lot of uh, failures in execution and a lot of defects will come okay so the qa qa or a quality assurance a tester make assures the quality of the product that yes that product quality is good only when we're doing all this analysis thoroughly 
on understanding the requirement, going to the test planning of it, creating the test case design, test case design, or it might be, we might be having different set of environment. We'll see what set of environment we have. We have SIT, we have EOT, so, okay. We have fraud also, but again, product we are not, uh, if it is fine, if you can mention also, we're not doing, but sometimes we have to do testing on production as well. The thing is, the moreover, the first stage of test environment is your system integration test is the first stage of environment, test environment. It comes to next with user acceptance test. Okay, whatever, let's suppose you have missed one particular defect. It might come even in user acceptance test. In this environment, you might have a defect. So once you fix it here, so that will not come to production. But if you miss any particular testing in this particular servers, it will come to production and it will damage a lot of image, trust, money, different losses, it will come. So production, we should not have any set of defect. So without test execution, we will not be having the test case, whatever we have done or designed that has to be tested on different servers, different environments is, is nothing but your test execution. When you do a test execution, only then you will find your test result. Whether your test result is pass or the test result is fail. If test result fail, we have a lot of defects. Test result pass says your actual and expected result is matching. And then you can go ahead with the next test closure. Test closure says, so you have done your 100% 100 uh, 100 tested and no defect. Okay. So, and then we can close the testing of that particular page. We can give a sign off. Sign off is nothing but closing that particular cycle or re release of the testing activities we have planned and executed. Guys, clear, not clear, we'll repeat again, please. Wherever you are facing some doubt or I know it will be a problem initially to, you know, uh, come with me. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure that I am a little fast or something. So I can, you know, control my speed, we'll go slowly. Guys, any doubt so far? Or no doubts? No one or everyone is clear, right? Perfect, sounds good. So what happens when you're, you tested okay, you got no defect, then only when there is no defect, then only what happens here in software development life cycle, if you, if you, you are tested, uh, test close the cycle, cycle is closed, no defect, and then the deployment happens into production. In production, or we say a client ready kind of thing, where in general you will come with this Amazon, right? This Amazon web website we are seeing, right? This Amazon or Flipkart, anything. So this particular things, it is on production. Already we are using, right? We can purchase any particular phone, uh, any, any particular product. So this is what we say. It is in production. So this Amazon uh, uh, thing. So, so sometimes you might have seen also uh, somewhere some issues are there. So we have to fix it. So that has to be fixed. So that comes under maintenance. Maintenance is a very particular team of people, contains a developer, tester, all of things. But in particular, different stage of software development, we went through the testing and in testing, we're going through the software testing life cycle. Software testing life cycle ensures 
we don't have a defect and we are building the software as per the requirement whatever the requirement we had we are building whether application is being built or developed as per the requirement whatever the requirement it has whether we are building or not and in the course of uh, testing we check whether our test result pass whether test result fail if test result failed so we make sure the test or the defect is getting fixed by the developer developer is fixing it and we make sure there is no defect in the application and if you 100% tested so whatever defect got defect got resolved and there is no defect if there is no defect so it is as i said here the first stage of thing if there is no defect the quality is definitely good if quality is good what happens customer satisfaction so without tester without test engineer your quality will not come at all so testing plays a very important role in doing everything it might be a you know different set of applications uh, no navin it is uh, software testing life cycle it is completely into software testing manual functional testing we are going through so if you mistakenly came so you can jump up to other meetings so the the tester we as a test engineer we make sure the particular application is being built with the requirement with the understanding and we make sure there is no difference with your actual and expected result we make sure if if there is some defect once you got the particular defect you make sure your expected and result is matching at the end of the day and test result pass so once test result pass no defect no defect quality good and definitely quality comes up with a satisfaction so today what we understood is we understood the software development life cycle different pages but we didn't go into the deep of things we understood the requirement feasibility design of things coding development testing installation and sort of maintenance without maintenance we'll not be doing whether it is software development life cycle or software testing life cycle so so the models we will discuss later on is agile agile definitely the questions and the understandings should be there to have a different sprint different type or level of testing we will be doing and then the software testing life cycle we have few activities it is the same like software development but we have to do the testing activities understanding the requirement planning what do you do a test plan a test plan also we'll see here down under if you do a test plan so what are the testing activities you are planning if you do a test plan is very important role generally a senior quality assurance or a manager senior qa or a manager sorry or a test manager determines the test plan strategy so test plan strategy generally comes up with your cost estimation and your effort calculation and resource calculation so moreover whatever resources environments limitations whenever you are planning to do whenever when you will start testing when you will end testing when you will deploy everything comes into a particular plan so it it comes with different efforts and estimations so whenever we say test planning test planning it has a set of document so what kind of document it is it is a document of preparing the strategy document of various types of testing we are planning or well, testing are divided into functional non functional performance we'll see so when we say different type of testing to be planned so what kind of testing tools we are planning to take whether is it is a test manual functional testing or test automation 
So if it is a minor functional testing, so it's Jira, XPALN, some other tools are also there, but this is very popular tools. If you come to test automation, okay, test automation tool like Selenium, open source, Tosca as a you know license tool, EFT as also license tool. So these tools are generally we select for planning the testing or you know a, a creating test cases, executing and defect reporting. So everything Jira is nothing but a test management tool. HP or ALM also plays a important role while doing the test management. Test management means from requirement, gathering requirement, a test plan, um, the test case design, test case execution, and defect reporting. So this all comes under and test automation also. It is being linked with the different tools, HPLM Jira, to do the automation um, uh, testing activities, and then um, doing all the all, all of everything from uh, taking the requirement to design uh, test automation test scripts, executing the automation test scripts, defect reporting, so all of things. So it generally uh, gives us idea about effort estimation, how much of effort we are, we are going to give and how much resources we have planned. Let's suppose we have a lot of people are here. Uh, we'll name Anaga, uh, Anissa, also, right? Uh, so, so all of people are nothing but my resources. All of you, Rakesh, Rahul, Prabhupada, so all of my resources, test resources. So you all, all have some responsibilities working on different set of testing. So that is what, if you do all set of things, so uh, the test plan comes like that. Test plan is not only planning manual function, it also plans the test automation activities. Okay. Guys, any doubt? We'll take on doubt. Any doubt so far? So tomorrow we'll go through different set of testing. Tomorrow, tomorrow class, uh, what we have to do is different uh, type of testing. And also we'll recap of things completed today. Recap of things done today. So tomorrow class will be going through different type of testing. And also we'll go through, if you have some time, we'll also go through the, the software development methodologies as agile methodology. And after that, we'll recap of the all, all the things we have done so far. Okay. So that once you will interact, you guys will interact from tomorrow so that we'll understand where your doubts are. And also you can clear your doubts, okay? Any doubts, anything so far? Five minutes left before we close the meeting. Let me no know. Doubt, no doubts, oh, great. Uh, who, who, I couldn't listen to you. Also, right? Okay, okay, so. Uh, Anuga, Anuga, any doubt so far? Anisa, no doubts? Okay. Perfect, perfect, Ral. Thanks. You understood at least. So we'll uh, uh, speed also will a little slow. Tomorrow we'll go slow. Okay. Uh, we'll understand the things whatever already we have covered so far. A different type of testing activities we are planning to do. Oh, because we make sure whenever we we're testing, we're testing and we make sure we, we're going through everything. Whether someone is asking what is test plan, you, you might have heard of test plan, but you are not able to speak. Okay, we should speak everything. And I think everyone, okay. If any doubts, you can ask me tomorrow also. Okay. And we'll go through this, all of things. We'll understand, we'll share you the different set of notes, the recordings, whatever it is there, right? Okay. So uh, testing without testers, lot of 
testing activities to be done. Okay. So that is what you learn the things, then only uh, implementation comes. Okay. We'll implement all of things, whatever you're doing in software testing lifecycle, whether we do a manual functional testing or test automation. We'll do everything in different cycle wise manner in planning, requirement, planning, design, development, execution, defect reporting. So we'll see till test closure, we'll go through in not only doing the manual functional activities as well as on test automation. Okay. So this is what a little brief idea on what are things we are going to plan, going to execute the things. And tomorrow class, what we'll do is different type of testing activities and whatever we have, we'll be doing that. So I think I can stop sharing today. If any doubts, you just ask.